This video explains how to install a FlexZone processor and attach the sensor cables to a fence. Installation requires two people. For a site with one or two processors, installation will typically take one day. On a normal 8-foot chain link fence, attaching the sensor cable takes about 1 hour per 100 meters or 328 feet. You will require a 1 meter wood dowel or rod to dispense the cable a utility knife or coaxial cable cutter, a cordless drill and a 5 16 nut driver bit, and a 1 8 inch slot screwdriver. If your FlexZone processor is to be connected to a network and requires a communications card, you should install its communications card before you start the processor installation. Refer to the included instructions for information. Select a location to install the FlexZone processor one that minimizes the need to run lengthy power and communication cables. Consult with your SenStar technical representative for information on site planning and security considerations. The processor includes two gear clamps and is typically mounted on a pole. Its mounting flanges also support wall mount applications. As an all-weather device, you may install the processor outdoors or inside a building. In this video, we mount it directly on the fence using the included hardware. When installing the processor on a fence, always place it on the non-threat side of the fence. For example, if you wish to detect intruders outside your property, install the processor on the inside of the fence. Dispense the sensor cable in a straight line near the fence and condition it. For information on how to perform the cable conditioning procedure, refer to the instructions included on each reel or watch the FlexZone cable conditioning video. Using UV-rated cable ties, attach the sensor cable along the fence, typically halfway up. Space the cable ties approximately every 30 centimeters, or one foot, and maintain a consistent height on the fence. Hand tighten each tie so that the cable is snug against the fence. Make sure you attach the cable to the middle sections of the links and not at the intersections. To maintain the conditioning of the cable and to ensure the correct tension, Secure the sensor cable to the fence by attaching the tie wraps in the following order. When attaching the sensor cable to the fence, attach the tie wraps in the middle of a chain link and not at the intersecting point. Tie wraps should be secure but not tight enough to collapse the cable tube. For extra security, after the system is fully tested, add two steel tie wraps per fence panel. Note, do not use twisted wire ties as these are intended for use only with armored cable. Every 50 meters or 165 feet, add a service loop to allow for future adjustments. The service loop should be 30 to 45 centimeters or 12 to 18 inches in height. At corners or heavily reinforced sections, add extra cable to form sensitivity loops. Avoid vertical drops greater than 1 meter or 3.3 feet. For longer vertical drops, angle the cable at 15 degrees. The cable should be snug against the posts but still movable with your finger. When bending the cable, avoid turns or angles that cause the hollow tube in the sensor cable to collapse. Regular flex zone sensor cable has a recommended minimum bend radius of 10 centimeters or four inches. A collapse in the sensor cable may prevent sensing in that area. At single or double swinging gates, add the sensor cable to each panel 30 centimeters or one foot from the edge. To get from one panel to the other, route the sensor cable underneath the gate area. Sliding gates are typically protected with the FlexZone wireless gate sensor. Contact your SenStar technical representative for information about the gate sensor and other sliding gate solutions. To bypass the sliding gate, route the sensor cable in conduit underneath the gate area. FlexZone sensor cable is available in 150 and 220 meter lengths. If you need to splice together two cables, up to a total of 300 meters if connected to a terminator or 600 meters if connected to an adjacent processor, you need to use a splice kit. To attach a splice kit, remove a short length of outer jacket and twist half of the braided shield into two prongs. Remove the aluminum shield and trim the clear tube so that it extrudes by five millimeters or one quarter inch. Cut off the other half of the braided shield and trim the wires to be flush. Attach each sensor cable to the splice kit. 
Fasten each cable to the circuit board with two cable ties. Trim off the extra cable tie straps. Press the cables and circuit board into the waterproof enclosure. Close the waterproof enclosure. The tabs will click when locked. Attach the splice kit to the fence. Raise it 15 centimeters or 6 inches above the sensor cable so that water drips away from it. If you have excess cable, add splice service loops so that the extra cable can be retained for future modifications or repair. There are two ways to terminate the end of a sensor cable. If the sensor cable is by itself, form a U-shape and attach a termination kit. One or both ends of the sensor cable can be attached to side A and side B of the FlexZone processor. If the end of your sensor cable does not connect to a processor, you need to use a termination kit. The terminator provides 47 kilo ohm DC termination in parallel with 100 ohm AC termination. To attach a termination kit, one, remove a short length of outer jacket and twist half of the braided shield into two prongs. Remove the mylar film. Trim the clear tube so that it extrudes by 5 mm or 1 quarter inch. Cut off the other half of the braided shield and trim the wires to be flush. 2. Attach each sensor cable to the termination kit. 3. Fasten each cable to the circuit boards with two cable ties. Trim off the extra cable tie straps. 4. Press the cables and circuit board into the waterproof enclosure. 5. Close the waterproof enclosure. The tabs will click when locked. 6. Attach the termination kit to the fence. Raise the enclosure 15 centimeters or 6 inches above the sensor cable so that water drips away from it. If you have excess cable, add a termination service loop so that the extra cable can be retained for future modifications or repair. To connect the sensor cable to the processor, twist the braided shield into two wires and trim the center conductor so that all three points end in parallel. Attach the wires to the removable terminal block and reattach it to the processor. The FlexZone processor requires a 12 to 48 volt DC power supply and draws a maximum of 2.5 watts. A FlexZone processor connected to a power supply can provide power to four additional processors, two on each side, over its sensor cable. This means a perimeter distance of up to 3 kilometers, or 9,800 feet, can be powered from one supply. The three-point connection to the terminals, two grounds plus one power, ensures a mechanically stable and strain-free connection. Once the sensor cable is connected and the FlexZone processor is powered on, you are ready to profile the sensor cable. See the FlexZone cable profiling tutorial for instructions.